Okay, I show it's four o'clock and uh, call the meeting of the Roads and Right of Way Committee to order for October 19th. Uh, we are via Zoom and the meeting is being recorded. Um, first item of business is public comment. And I see no, no members of the public. So we'll go on to uh, number two, minutes from September 21st. Um, there was some discussion, Rick uh, uh, Atherton had a question about the minutes. Um, and Lee, do you want to address that first or should I just go to? Uh, go to yeah, let me, let me suggest that, not suggest, let me relate that Rick and I have had a nice conversation and we've done a little bit of amending to the minutes. Uh, he had supplied some uh, language to go into the section on uh, ways. And then uh, he also mentioned that there was some confusion about his uh, request for more information about ways to the water. So um, I am going to open up my copy of the minutes. I'm not gonna share a screen unless somebody asks, but under item four of last month's meeting, second paragraph where, I apologize, I should get those clocks stopped, um, where Ken Bogran had uh, asked whether we should um, review an application for a grant and uh, I said to Rick, you know, we've had a chorus of disapproval. And so we agreed to keep the sentence that says several members said that they were not enthusiastic about the proposed project. Rick's suggestion of Ken Bogrand's summary, and Ken's here to uh, listen. Ken Bogrand summarized that the application was not something that the Roads and Right-of-Way Committee should have input on. The next sentence in the original draft was removed so that it then goes on to read, if however the grant is funded, then this committee might wish to review the findings. And if we go down to section five, public access to the harbors and the waters, there's a paragraph where uh, Rick Atherton thought that it might be useful to list all authorizations. In that, there was a discussion um, prompted by a question from Nat Lowell about something called Frederick Way. Since nobody actually knew where Frederick Way was or if it actually existed, Rick recalled that it was Fraser Way and even he wasn't sure uh, if that was uh, ever listed in the town street list. We just deleted several of those uh, sentences alluding to it so that the ways that we're talking about are generally along Baxter Road and Hulbert Avenue. An example is the way between 71 and 73 Baxter Road. Alan Reinhardt noted that this way is beyond the northern end of Wisconsin Bluff Walk. And although a public way is not a candidate for a monument. Rick, uh, to you, did I, did I capture the changes? I think you've uh, said it quite well. We had some dialogue that I think was productive. And, uh, you know, I just didn't think, for example, on that last section, we necessarily wanted to have some language that was uh, inaccurate and confusing and, and and showed that we didn't know what the hell we were talking about. <laughs> so. Okay. Um, everybody just hold your horses. Ed Gillum is joining us. And I'm noting the time, it's not, it's 4.04. Right. Ed, we're uh, in the process of reviewing the minutes. I related a few editorial, and I'm gonna suggest that these were editorial changes and don't need an additional vote, but that the copy um, now before you does need uh, approval of the minutes. And so that will take a motion a second. And, and that's Alan the latest copy we vote. just received, right? Sorry, Ed. That's the latest copy we just received yesterday, yes. I believe. Yes. Yes. Right. Okay. I reviewed it. Okay. 
Okay, so I'd entertain a motion to approve the minutes from September. Uh, Alan, okay. uh, one other thing. Um, yes. On page five, I don't have the I don't have it right in front of me, but on page five, uh, there is a reference to Leslie that I think should be should be changed because she's no longer. Yeah. Thank you for uh, reminding Lee mentioned that to me also. And uh, that was my error. Um, usually when I'm doing the agenda, um, I just kind of copy over the project list at the end there, but I will be sure and correct that. Um, well, um, Alan and Phil, I thought maybe at uh, our last agenda item, uh, new old and other business, um, we might mention that, of course, Leslie Forbes is no longer a member of the committee right. and that um, either you'll be looking for uh, a name or we can suggest a name at that point. Uh, Phil, I think it's significant enough that it, if, if, if we discuss it, it'll show up in the minutes. Okay. Great. Ed? Um, just a very minor point on uh, paragraph two, um, the name of the road Monahansen is misspelled, but I mean, does that matter? I'll fix that. Okay. <laughs> Great. Okay. Any other um, uh, errors, omissions, additions, or whatever to the minutes? Well, we need we need a, a motion and a second. Well, that's what I was just going to ask for. Yes, Rick. I'd be happy to move the approval as uh, drafted and sent out today. Okay. And is there a second to the motion? Okay. Second, Ed. Great. Uh, all in favor, we'll do it by roll call. Uh, Lee? Aye. Phil? Aye. Uh, uh, Rick? Aye. And Ed? Aye. And chair votes, aye. Rod? What about Rob? No, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have the speaker view. I don't have the gallery view on. So sorry about that, Rob. Didn't oh. mean to pass over you. <laughs> Uh, Rob? Aye. Great. Um, I think I've got everyone there. So thank you. Uh, those minutes from September 21 are approved then as, as um, discussed today. Okay. Um, I, with uh, the committee's uh, um, um, indulgence, I want to skip to number four. Five. Ken Bogrand is on, and Ken has a very busy schedule, as we all know. <laughs> and um, uh, I just want it, uh, um, to go to number five, which is an update of the roads and sidewalk projects. Um, so uh, with the committee's indulgence, I'll go to number five, update road and sidewalk projects. Ken, do you have any... Um, relevant information on what's going on with the roads and sidewalk projects? The uh, first, first of all, with respect to the application that we talked about last month for the, the study for the sidewalks, the Community Preservation Committee voted uh, against uh, granting an award for that. Uh, they felt that it was inappropriate because A, the committee had not in fact asked the town for funding and B, in discussions with the town, the town said that it was not a high priority at this particular point in time. So uh, that study uh, is not gonna be funded by the Community Preservation Committee. I know that, that I've, I've talked to Libby and, and Libby's working with the DPW to in fact sort of get a handle on the structure of the various roads and sidewalk projects that are, that are going on. Uh, they are moving forward. Uh, for those of you who may not have noticed, they are fixing the sidewalk in front of the town building. Uh, and it's, it's really nice that I can walk into the office and not worry about tripping over the bricks uh, or the curl, curl in the sidewalk that the trees have done. Um, with respect to the, the Lover's Lane, uh, that project is, is moving. We're, we're moving forward with the stuff that we can do with the people that we have available. Uh, but, but there is going to be a delay in that simply because of the staffing uh, and various other things. But, but there is... Um, a concerted effort being made to, in fact, get a sense of timing and a indication of which of the projects have higher priority and moving forward with them so that that 
that we start to move forward again, uh, in spite of the fact that we don't have a new uh, director for the DPW. Great. Good, any questions for Ken? Uh, yeah, uh, Ken, I was uh, scribbling as you were talking. Let me see if I've got this correct. One group denied um, the NHC, the Historical Commission's request for uh, a grant application. The That's denial right. came from CPC or from a town committee? No, no it, it came from the CPC. The, the CPC considered their, their application for funding and the CPC felt that their application was not one that they were gonna recommend for funding in the town warrant for this year. Okay, thank you, Ken. Great, and uh, just to follow up on that, um, I never received a copy of the um, uh, proposal from the uh, Historic Commission. Um, so, uh, and the, the more I thought about it, I mean, with the need to actually do some work in the sidewalks rather than just, um, um, you know, determine what's there and, and which curbs are historic, which bricks are historic, and so on. Um, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I fully support the CPA uh, commission on that. So, um, good. Okay. Ken. And, and you, and, and Adam, uh, and, and on item three, I just want to, have, want to have one comment with respect to the, to the word um, um, recreation. Recreation. Yeah, uh, I, I just I just want to caution anybody to think about the chaos that that will create, because recreation has can be interpreted as lying down, going 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 down and, and going for a swim. The next thing you know is that you're going to bring a blanket that you're going to come and sit on, and the next thing you're going to do is you're going to bring your dog along with you to sit on your blanket. And, and I just want to suggest that 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 the fact of, <clears throat> of this suddenly be, being available to all of the private properties along the North Shore or the South Shore that have in fact been have deeds said that they they, they own uh, to the uh, uh, high water mark uh, on the beach uh, will create some major major issues with respect to first of all enforcement but b also I think incredible litigation relative to property rights. Uh, so it's it's just a word of caution because of the fact that 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 it's just my legal background that says that 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 word uh, has such a broad meaning that I think that 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 I can understand the intent of what they were trying to do, but I think that the use of that language without any constraints will lead to chaos. So, uh, Ken, this uh, the, 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 this is Lee. Uh, as you were speaking, I'm thinking of such things as recreational drugs, but that's not the nature of my question. That's not the nature of my question. Is this rescuable? Um, for example, a phrase active um, recreation or the inclusion of a definition of recreation as, as part of the amendment? Or is it something that should be, um, how should I, uh, held back until until uh, more hearings and more thought can be given to it. Quite quite honestly, Lee, I think that that without more hearings and thought, uh, it opens a Pandora's box that, that I think is right. is just something that that uh, um, you know as 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 a community and as a state, uh, it's going to create unbelievable issues because right. the fact is is that that that. We, we know that, that, that with the creative legal minds that exist in this state and all of the law firms in the state, uh, a word as loose as that will allow virtually anything to uh, uh, be perceived as being fit within the definition. So I, I mean, I'm, I, 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 I'm not speaking one way or the other. I'm just mentioning that, that when I took a look at it, I think it opens a Pandora's box that, that we should be very careful or, or certainly be aware of what the potential ramifications of it are. Good, okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Rick and Phil and uh, Ed in that order, Rick. Uh, um, yes, 
Um, thank you. This is not not so much on Ken's comment, but it's 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 tangential. I was um, uh, met with Jeff Carlson and picked up a number of Chapter ninety one licenses, and in some of them, it's interesting. Um, it it uses the word strolling mm -hmm. as part of what they authorize to occur between the high and low watermarks. So, you know, that's that's an interesting use of language as well. <laughs> and, and it's already out there. So just an observation. Good, yeah, thank you. Uh, Phil? Yeah, I, I was gonna say, I mean, what we're talking about is the wet sand area between right. high tide and low tide. And so other than, you know, what's already been in the books for hundreds of years, you know, uh, fishing navigation and, you know, uh, fouling, I, I think the only thing, you know, you would be doing in the wet sand is walking, you know, walking along or strolling or whatever. I mean, any other activity, as Ken says, you're just opening a door that, and, mm -hmm. and to try to come up with a definition of what you can do in the wet sand is, you know, don't even try to go there. <laughs> True. Good point. Uh, Ed? Uh, I, I agree with uh, Ken. I actually have always thought that recreation was wrong terminology because it's a very broad term and I think it could cause at the very least uh, pushback from owners similar to the vineyard. I mean, Nantucket has kind of a unique situation that uh, of tolerance, except in a couple of instances. Um, but I think if it starts getting to the legal mat, then I think a lot of these homeowners will start enforcing, trying to enforce their own rights. So I think it could cause a lot of, um, it could change the makeup of use of the beach for sure, especially when there's not, you know, the one big beach program or something in place that would uh, supersede what's going on. Exactly, good. Well, those are all good points. And uh, I had a, uh, a couple of discussions myself over the last month since we discussed this and, um, the word strolling, uh, which, by the way, is used on some of the Chapter 91 signs that have been tacked up on, um, um, you know, whenever somebody puts a, a, a dock in or, you know, some change there. And uh, part of the requirement is to put a sign up. Um, and I have noticed the word strolling um, being used. I went back to the Civic League um, um, presentation a few months ago on chapter 91 and um, oh, I've forgotten his name, the representative from the DE, DE. The Department of Environmental Protection, Coastal Zone Management. Right, yes, the, yes, that group. Um, he also mentioned strolling uh, as as a word there, um, so that's a that's a, a good point. Um, all right, well we're on uh, number three now. So Ken, thank you for getting us started on that. And right. and you're thank welcome. You for, thank you for changing the agenda for me. So now I can go back to the next meeting. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you, well, Ken. Alan. Yes, Bill. Alan is. Um, is, I guess this is before the um, the Senate or the, the whatever it is up on Beacon Hill. I mean, is this how how close are they to voting on this, or are they asking for comments and discussion, or wh where are they on that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They have a ways to go, Rick. Rick, yeah, I think they have a ways to go. Um, I I uh, called uh, Charity Grace Molson. You know our legislative uh, liaison to Dylan. And she and I have had a conversation about this and she said she would touch base with Dylan about how he might feel we as a community should proceed and what their thoughts are. And I'll get back to you. She hasn't gotten back to me, but she will. And uh, I think it's worth having that discussion as well. I just make one observation about this whole thing. The last time, you know, you can read in the articles how this has always been contentious in Massachusetts, but we are um, probably one of two states in the country, maybe three, that are as um, old-fashioned 
and um, as restrictive on public use of our water access and beaches. And it's just, you go to Texas and they have all kinds of uh, better ways to deal with this than we do. And mm. I always like to think of Massachusetts as a very blue state until it comes to real estate. And uh, at times we are more red than anybody in that area, so. Well, for, for what it's worth, I just have in my notes from that, that meeting that was on March 24th, this with a Civic League, uh, there were two people. One of them was Stephen McKenna, who mm -hmm. was the Cape and Islands Regional Coordinator for Chapter 91. Yes. That might be a, a, a contact point. The other one was Carlos Fergata from the uh, Overseas the uh, Mass DEP. So, I mean, these are people that I would think would be deeply involved in uh, advising the, our representatives on this. Right. I do remember um, we had a, a follow-up from uh, one or the other, or maybe even both of those speakers at that forum um, the day after uh, there was some concern about their use of the word strolling because that is not an official, um, <laughs> it's not in the, the uh, language there. But perhaps that would be the route that the, um, our local representatives might want to take is to use the word strolling or some form of public uh, ability to cross the wet sand um, because that's essentially what we're looking for is uh, the right to cross over the wet sand between the high and the low tide lines. So oh, here comes Nat. Uh, Alan? Yes. In lieu of strolling, I offer up perambulation. <laughs> <laughs> you have to spell it first though. <laughs> Great. Hey, Nat, uh, welcome. Good luck. Hi, I'm sorry, um, very sorry. No, that's all right. That's all right. Um, so, so Phil, this is another, um, not to show up in the minutes comment, but um, the General Court of Massachusetts is the legislative branch and the agencies are executive branch. And uh, under division of powers, there's going to be a mechanism for one to ask the other for help because it, I don't think it may be uh, automatic. Um, again, separation of powers. Not being a constitutional uh, lawyer, I'll stop there. Great. Right. So, Nat, just bring up to date. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about uh, the Chapter 91 amendment. Um, to add the word recreation. Uh, Ken Bogran gave the opinion, uh, strictly a personal opinion, that the word uh, recreation is too broad a word. It would include too many things and could lead to lawsuits and so on. So the question is, uh, what we're looking for is access, public access across the wet sand between the high and the low tide line. Um, and uh, so, so anyway, that, that's where we are in the discussion at the moment. I mean, is this about the yard sale properties that we have that access or is this, what is this regarding? Well, this is, Sorry. In, this is um, in regard to the uh, our two state representatives, Senator. Um, oh, oh, Sears. the legislation. Okay, sorry. No, that yeah. word. Yeah. So uh, the, I can see that being a problem. Okay. Do you have any uh, <laughs> suggestions? Well, I mean, I'll get to lead. When we, moment. when we, all right? For example, Alan. And thank you. I'm sorry. I'm late. If it makes you feel any better, I was in. I was on near the bluff path working on a house, so that'll make me feel more historic. Nice. Um, so remember the uh, remember when the um, 
Total Act building was getting changed and they and they had to have the license for the for the um, you know the store on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Whenever there's an, an application that's near the water, right? And that whole thing came comes up about you can't have living space on the first floor or whatever it is. I mean, there's a lot of pieces to that chapter 91 license. Um, so by that, so that, what uh, other language are they using, Lee? That you're 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 adding in language of the harbor overlay district. That, okay. has to do, that has to do with residential use of properties. So that has water. nothing to do with Chapter 91. Uh, not to say that it doesn't, but um, I, I think both may apply. Right. Okay. So access, like the little pathways, like yep. by the Great Harbor Yacht Club, the stuff down on um, Commercial Wharf, Old South Wharf, whatever we're calling it, Swain's Wharf. Um, and then there's that one over by, you know, the newer stuff, Alan, is over by um, Dreamland. Mm -hmm. You got to walk between, and then that other building that they redid, uh, the race did, there's a little gate and a sign that says public way or public access there. But it's not recreation. That's just access. Right. Well, in, in terms of the... Um... Uh, amending the chapter 91 to include the word recreation. I think that uh, Rick's comment about having um, charity. Um, charity Grace Mawson. Yeah, having uh, their representative uh, letting. Charity Grace Mawson. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, letting her know to relate. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that uh, both Julian Sear and um, our, our other representative have um, both heard an earful about this from, well, from uh, people and so on. So I think at this point, yes, I'm sorry, Lee. You, well, I, I, I think I'm gonna finish your sentence for you. Up until I heard Ken's, uh, explanation of why the word may be too broad. I was prepared to say, let's make a motion to the town in support. I now feel that we should defer to at least the next meeting or until we hear back from Charity Grace about the status of the bill uh, before we uh, make any kind of a recommendation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think at this point, um, it's something that we should will definitely monitor in terms of what uh, what goes on there, because as we know, it is a um, a local issue. Um, mm. <laughs> so uh, we'll we'll monitor it, and uh, perhaps they will come up with a better word than recreation, such as strolling or simply saying public access over wet sand. Um, but however, that, that could be done. So, all right. Um, anything now, else? can I just ask one question? Is this affecting the whole, well, the shoreline communities of the whole state? This Correct. bill, right? Yeah. Oh, my God. They're going to get all sorts of input. Well, that was Ken's point. He said that there are all sorts of legal questions. Once, uh, once you put a word like recreation into... Um, a, a, as an amendment to uh, a chapter of the, um, um, in the, the mass laws. Um, so yes, we need to be careful <laughs> in terms yeah. of the language there. So, all right. So that brings us to the next item, which is sort of an extension of the same thing, public access, uh, to the ponds, harbors, tidelands, ocean, and so on. Uh, that's one of our main functions as a committee is public access. Um, you know, we're um, supposedly the, the group that, you know, when there are questions or issues of public access, um, we are the, we are 
a body that re makes recommendations to the select board. There are a number of other ways that a uh, number of other uh, uh, people who, who uh, make reference to the select board and so on. Um, but yes, um, Ed? I was trying to finish up with, uh, I apologize, but the, the, the article we were talking about before Right. The um, you know the ex the Oxford definition of recreation, by the way, is basically activity done for enjoyment when one is not working. So, <laughs> so I mean, I don't know how loose you, more loose you could be, <laughs> yeah. unless, unless you're working all the time and they can be like you're sleeping. Right. <laughs> no, exactly. Well, I I think Ken's point is a good one that uh, there would be. A few, the lawyers would have a field day with a word like recreation um, in there. <laughs> and um, so I, I think that that is the, the point. Basically, as I say, what we're looking for is the ability to walk, to have public access over those properties. <laughs> so, or over that part, that portion of the property so and uh rick is absolutely right as far as having the among the most restrictive coastal um regulations anywhere in the country but then again we were one of the first um of the colonies with a an extensive coastline so um you know figures <laughs> yes ed well, because originally it included Maine as well, but um, exactly. <laughs> but I want to um, correct you a little bit, Alan, as well. Uh, being in the real estate business, we're not really allowed to say walking. Uh, fair housing uh, says that is discriminatory against handicapped people. So I think it would turn out to be just passage across, because wow. I mean, you could you know you could stroll a uh, stroll, you could walk, you could crawl, you could. Take your wheelchair. I mean, yeah, you know, you know what I mean. There's a lot of. Uh, it's mainly passage we want, right? Exactly. Actually, what a great word, <laughs> passage. Well, that, yeah, yeah, right. that that would do it. That would do it. Passage over the wet sand, or however they want to define it. So, good. All right. Well, that's a good point. Maybe. Um, yes, um, uh, Rick. Just for, Rick. just one more thought. Um, I, I know when we got into this a while back in, in another context, um, not so much this committee, the community, mm -hmm. um, Maine is, has expanded their use of the public, of, of all the water uh, access in Maine. And, uh, I, th I think I'll find some of those articles. You'd, and, and I think they've expanded them to include sort of more modern uses of the beach. Mm -hmm. um, and this went up, I think, through their uh, Supreme Court in the state of Maine. But anyway, there are examples like that around how other states have brought these kinds of regulations on a more current basis, if you will, which I'm not saying that's going to happen here, but we might all find them interesting. So mm -hmm. I'll dig that out for us. Great. Good. Good. Yeah. As Ed said, uh, Maine was a part of Massachusetts um, when we were initial, uh, initially a um, um, <laughs> up for consideration as a state. Or, uh, okay. So uh, again, going into uh, the next item on the agenda, public access and so on, um, it occurred to me there is no map, specific map that shows the public access points that do exist. Um, we mentioned last month uh, the town um, emergency services does have a list of 50, I think there are 52 or 53 uh, public access points around the island. Uh, I'm sorry, they are not all public access points, but um, I guess we should just call them access to the water. 
And uh, not all of those are public. Some of them are on private property. By the way, they do consider the um, access points on land bank and conservation foundation property. I mean, that, that is also private property. However, those are um, publicly available um, spots and beaches and so on. I believe uh, all of the conservation foundation properties, all of the land bank properties, um, Autumn, any, any other property owner who owns on uh, the ocean or the great ponds at least must, it would be subject to chapter 91 and require public access. Um, so the question um, that, that I'm, I'm raising in item number four is uh, should we develop a map showing where the public can legally access uh, the water around the island? Is that a, a something that we as a committee might want to um, organize and support? Yes, Ed? I think it's a great idea. Would that would that include um, organizations like the foundation and the land bank? The land bank is that considered private, actually, or is it public? Well, uh, it, private uh, land bank. It's privately owned uh, yeah. because, yeah. because the land bank is um, a kind of a unique entity in that we are a not so much a division of the county, but we are. Um, you know, obviously we work with, um, <laughs> how, I, there's a term for it and I, I just don't remember that term off the top of my head, but. Um, uh, Quasi-public? Hmm? Quasi-public? Quasi uh, well, that's uh, the one that, we use. There, there are a couple of uh, variations on non-governmental organizations, NGOs. Uh, yeah. the, the English call them quangos quasi-autonomous non-government organization. <laughs> well, be that as it may, they, they do uh, provide public access as part of their um, mission because they are tax-free. The, um, both the Land Bank and the Conservation Foundation, any of the uh, 501c3 organizations that might own property, um, access to a pond and so on are public and would uh, part of the reason they don't have to pay taxes is because they provide a public benefit. The public benefit is public access to the properties. So uh, Phil and then Lee. Yeah, uh, I am looking at, um, Nathan Porter sent me about two weeks ago and I'm got a call on him to try to help uh, explain it, but, uh, he sent me about 25 tiles for PDFs. Right. And uh, there are all of these, I'll tell you what the various, this is all around the island and they're, they're different colored dots. And you, one of them is green land bank, brown is Matticut Conservation Land Trust, purple is Nantucket uh, Conservation Foundation. Uh, then you have purple, uh, a light purple for Nature Conservancy. Then you have blue Town of Nantucket. And then you have aqua, which is Town of Nantucket slash Land Bank. And then you have a star, which is Harbor Access, which are the places that we know, for example, on Holbert Avenue and mm -hmm. Pacamo and Pulpus and stuff like that. So Nathan has got all of this. I think this is just another situation or example where there is a database that doesn't necessarily synchronize with all the other databases that we are aware of. Right, so what we could do is pull that together. I mean, um, I know there's a copy of the, where all those different uh, beach access points are. Um, that list, by the way, of course, was developed um, um, as a guide, if there was an emergency, somebody, you know, had an accident on the beach or something where um, anyone calling in could give that number 
and the police would know where to go or the ambulance or whatever emergency equipment was necessary. As with the uh, boat landing on Sunday at Fisher's uh, Fisherman's. Yes, Lee? Lee? Uh, Alan and uh, Phil, we've, uh, we've discussed this and I'm beginning to think that our best move would be to recommend to the town that these files be coalesced into a map to show up on uh, the planning um, PLUS um, webpage, along with some of the other maps like road ownership uh, and so forth. It seems to me that a professional should be able to uh, create a map, um, the scale of which could be zoomed so that you could see an individual property or could be reduced so that you could see the whole island. Um, I'm looking at Phil. Um, this is probably more technically complex than we're able to do, but it seems to me that it is doable. And I think Nathan Porter would be the key because he does have the skills, the equipment and um, everything to do that. Yes, Ed? This map here that I'm holding up, who, who puts together this map right here, the Nantucket Beach map that is updated? Oh, good question. Um, because it seems like it, we have, uh, it would be a much simpler process if we took some variation of what's already there like this and provided the public access that we're trying to show. Does that make any sense? I mean, it does, different. yeah. It, All the different places that they're for the emergency access. Right. I'm just Alan, wondering if Alan, we need to also see if they're actually open. Like some of these paths may not be opened up that, that exist and people know about. It. Right. I don't know. Yeah, Phil? Can we get Nathan to join us at our next meeting? Because essentially we're, you know, we're, we're this is a perfect example. Nathan is the guy who, who got all of this, but as he tells me, he only has what people tell him. In other words, it's, it's, it's sort of like whatever goes into the system, he, or whatever he is told, he puts it on the map. And if he's not told, it doesn't go on the map. And I think we need to be able to have as a committee, the opportunity to, to question him. And each of us have our own questions as to, you know, what's up and what's down. Otherwise we're just speculating. Right, uh, that's, a, that's a good point. And he, um, hmm. yes, um, Lee? What I'm hearing from Phil is that Nathan Porter responds to direction. Um, we are advisory, therefore we may not direct him to do something. We can ask him to do it, but we may not direct him to. However, as advisory committee, we can ask the powers that be uh, to consider such a direction. And uh, I, I'm proposing, Alan, that you confer with Ken Bogrand as to the advisability of going to um, town manager uh, and then back down through the IT department to Nathan. Yeah. He that's right, Lee. And, and he leaves every day on the passport, I believe, too, for a fourth. Right. He, he does. Uh, I've invited him to attend our meetings, but um, again, he, he's on that four o'clock. I, An I think Andrew can get him to do this. You just send him an email or ask exactly. him or something. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Um, um, Rick? Rick? Just to remind us, and picking up on what Nat just said, mm -hmm. when uh, Andrew was at a meeting, the, I don't know, nine or 10 months ago, he recommended doing just that. He volunteered that a good way to proceed was to deal with Nathan Porter. And that's what we yeah. heard at the meeting. And right. I think that's the simplest way to do that, just to follow up on Nat's approach yeah. and see where we go. Yeah, I think that's better, Alan, because he does a lot of stuff that's not, you know, necessarily one for one reason or another. A lot of land stuff. They're doing all kinds of things. So he, this would just be something in his in his list of stuff he's doing. I think this is great. I don't think there'd be any issue with it. 
And maybe we can, if we have, I don't think it costs us anything other than this time. Um, maybe we can find some resources and planning commission or something for something like this. I don't know what it would cost beyond his time, but certainly something he can do, you know? Right. Good. So, um, yeah. Now Phil already has a good relationship with him and yeah. um, Nathan has presented uh, to Phil these, what, 20, 20 some maps uh, where there's a question. Now those maps, um, you know, there's a question as to whether it is a public or private way um, on some of That's these roads, which is sure what, what, some, yeah. yeah, which is what Phil's been um, um, researching, doing. I mean, we that. didn't know Lovers Lane was public till a few years ago. You know, I mean, there's some, there's going to be some out there. So. Well, that's that's the thing. We keep thinking that we're, you know, that we have them all, and then all of a sudden Franklin Street shows up, and you know, not laid there. out, never taken. Yeah, Peter exactly. Street, exactly. <laughs> uh, Phil, uh, Nathan, I've I've been talking to Nathan now for like the last four months. Sure. Uh, he is extremely responsive. He is very helpful. Uh, it's never one of these things where I got to go talk to my boss before I do that. I mean, he's very responsive and he has helped us both trying to get a handle on public and private roads. And he mm -hmm. gave us a whole thing of the island. With, with this. So we've got that. And then we've narrowed it down and said, okay, this is great. Can we, can you help us figure out the access points uh, on the beaches? And so that's the latest thing that he, mm -hmm. he uh, sent me. And I can certainly um, send everybody on the committee what he most recently sent me, which are all these different colored dots all around the island at the beach access points. Uh, but, every, you know, it's one of those things that every time he sends me a, a new set of these things, it raises, you know, five more questions. And, and those, you know, when you talk right. to them, then they, you get another bunch of questions. So that's why right. I think if we all start from the same point, looking at the stuff that he has presented to us, then we can all kind of dig into, you know, where do we go from here? Exactly, exactly. Good, all right. Well, I, I like the idea of having a map, something that shows where the public can access the water, um, whether it's the ponds, what, you know, all across the island. And I think, as Phil just said, that really ties in with the uh, public ways um, you know, which of these ways are public and private. Once we narrow, can narrow that down, then um, the next step would be to go and, and check some deeds and find out which of uh, those roads were in fact taken or were not, or were taken and never followed through on. Um, okay, well, I think, I think Phil's given us a good start on this whole project. And if the ultimate, uh, the ultimate goal of the project is to have a map where the public can take a look and say, oh, I can go to the beach here or I can go to the beach there and so on, um, that would be a good thing. And maybe we'll pick up some other uh, ways that are undetermined, whether they're public or private ways. I don't think there are many of them, but who knows? You know, we'll find out. I, I, I would... I would say that understanding what Nat's saying, that he, he, he lives on the Cape and so he leaves on the afternoon boat. Uh, I don't know whether uh, the town has uh, overnight facilities for, but I mean, clearly he, he's got to be, he's going to be on island or at least he has to be in his office on the Cape. He can't be on the boat trying to do this for us at four right. o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon, but well, we can, one of us can put him up for the night, that's all. Well, <laughs> yeah, although that's a pretty big ask, you know, for somebody mm. who's gone back and forth. But, um, but um, I think we can get the information that we need from um, Nathan and then yeah. uh, bring it to the meeting here. And then as we sort of um, take a look at what, what's there, see what needs to happen to take it to the next step. Ed? 
I'm, I'm wondering from looking at the beach map itself, I mean, is um, trustees of reservations land and um, well, that's, that, that actually is probably, you know, most, if you pay the fee or you get the sticker that's accessible, um, I guess Audubon land might be one of them that would come into, into this picture as well. You know, it's, it, we named earlier Land Bank Foundation, but the Audubon does have some key kind of public access to ponds, quitted areas, you know, places like that. So maybe, well, just put that in the, the, the pot as well, I guess. Now, Alan, there yeah. is no way we as a committee can look at this stuff and not immediately have questions uh, for, for Nathan. I, I mean, it's just, the, the, it just raises, because we all know the general layout of the island and stuff, it just, and mm -hmm. so I really think that he's got to be as soon as we have a chance to look at what he has sent to me and I can send to us and we kind of digest it, the next step is for him to be available to us because we're good. Otherwise, we're just going to be going around in circles speculating. Um, okay, good point. It, yes. it's, it's, it's not unknown for us to have an ad hoc meeting off schedule if we plan it long enough in advance right. and uh, for us to meet at 3 p.m. on a Tuesday uh, with a special agenda uh, simply to accommodate Nat Porter uh, mm -hmm. is a possibility. And so uh, I throw that out to see whether anybody else thinks it's a good idea. Um, that, that would work. You, you remember that we used to meet at uh, two Fairgrounds Road, uh, right adjacent yeah. to Nathan's office. And um, when we were meeting live like that, anytime I had a question, I could just walk into his office and, and uh, let him know what our needs were and so on. Um, okay. Um, I'm just trying to think of the, the shape here. What, what, what do we want to end up with? And it seems to me that if we, had, if we could develop a map that showed the access points, uh, that would be step number one. Step number two would be to see any, uh, see if there are any roads leading to those access points that might, um, you know, where there's a question as to whether it's public or private. And again, the uh, files that Phil has from Nathan those Madikit files, as I say, there are 20 some of them and they're pretty extensive files too. I mean, they're, they're big files. Um, um, hmm. All right, uh, yes, Ed? I would add just one further piece. I think, I think you're on the right path, Alan, but also I guess thirdly, making sure if they're mapped uh, there's public access uh, to make sure that there's indeed they're cleared for public access you know, right. so that we can actually, you know, you know how a lot of these roads have grown up and exactly been co-opted or whatever with landscaping or whatnot. So, right. Wow. All right. All right. Okay, good. Uh, remember, we are advisory to the select board and um, hmm. all right. Well, I think, uh, uh, yes, Lee. Alan, is it appropriate for you to advise, inform uh, Andrew Vorse of this discussion, get his reaction? If he's the contact point of contact, we don't need to do any more. If mm -hmm. he says, I think you may need authorization from somebody else, at least we would know uh, to whom to turn. Right. Um, yeah, Andrew is a key person. Anytime I have a question, um, uh, uh, like this, I'll usually start with Andrew. And if he didn't have the answer, he would usually refer me to Eleanor. Of course, Eleanor isn't there, but <laughs> um, anyway, the, the planning the planning department, yes, is, um, is very helpful. I certainly will um, relay our conversation here about the map and about public access to Andrew. Um, um, you know, <laughs> within the next few days. So I'll have that for our next meeting. Um, 
Good. All right. All right. Anything else on um, the item four, the public access uh, question? All right. That moves us to number six. Uh, we talked about roundabouts and um, rotaries uh, a couple of months ago, and it seemed to be the the consensus before we make a recommendation to the select board that um, <laughs> we should have involvement from the new transportation planner, which um, is still in the works, I understand. Um, I mean, so as far as taking, I, I guess the short of it is, as far as taking a position on roundabouts and so on, we had a pretty lengthy discussion a uh, couple of months ago, or yeah, a couple of months ago. Um, and I think it's, um, well, so I, I think before we send a formal recommendation to the select board, uh, we should give them a chance to get their people in place, specifically the, the transportation planner, rather than simply making a recommendation to the select board and saying, here you go, um, you know, find us, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I think we should table this a little bit. Not yeah. not completely put it oh, to don't rest, worry. but yeah. no. I think yeah. we should table it. Right. Uh, um, and the town is nowhere near ready yet to do any well, I won't say nowhere near ready. They they do have a plan for both Prospect Street, um, the um, um, Surfside Road and uh, Bartlett Road. And of course the main rotary they're going to redo as well. So yeah. there are plans in place, but I think we need to give time uh, for the town to get its, um, um, I was gonna say act together, but it's it's really not that, uh, to, to allow them to get their personnel um, in place um, so that we can work with them in terms of sharing our thoughts about roundabouts and rotaries and where the people should cross and all that sort of thing to the appropriate party. Yes, Lee? I agree with you 100%. And so I regret to tell everybody you're not going to hear my five reasons why we should support <laughs> roundabouts, rotaries, and sometimes called traffic circles. Um, at the appropriate time, we'll do that. When we have a traffic planner on board, Alan, he or she should be invited to a meeting mm. and we should be organized enough to give to this person our list of uh, concerns, one of which would be rotaries um, and uh, roundabouts, mm -hmm. but there may be others. And uh, certainly uh, sidewalks or multi-use paths on of the key ways, Pleasant Street Prospect and, and so forth, mm -hmm. is another one. Um, so I'm asking, does anybody know if we even have prospects of a planner, of a transportation planner? <laughs> that is a- yeah, do, you, do you want to take that one or I- I'd I rather not say anything, to be honest. I mean, yeah. this is uh, getting in the weeds a little bit. So the guy that we had is not coming. The guy that was going to come is not coming. That That's a guarantee. Um, there was just, I can't say this stuff on this at this meeting. It would make my hair light on fire, so I don't want that to happen. Um, it isn't as easy as you think to get somebody to do this. This is a, a very unusual position because of the confusing. It's like what Lawrence Sinatra does. Like, who could do that? Like, it's insanity. Like, how do you figure it out? Like, it's very complicated state stuff. You know, it's all just, you know, government stuff, you know, that's no one understands. So well, hopefully we'll have some news that we can share soon for that. But right. um, 
I mean, Alan, when you bring up those two intersections, I mean, there's plans and different like A, B, C versions, mm -hmm. but there isn't like a, a, something that's like, so I guess I would say approved oh, or ready to go or whatever, however you want to look at it. When, the best part about those two intersections though, Alan, is the land is now secured. Exactly. So that was harder than doing the roundabout, especially the, the piece at Bartlett, that little piece in Poets Corner. Mm -hmm. And the um, hospital sort of, you know, arrangement that was made for that road for the moving the new building back towards mm -hmm. the college cemetery. You know all about that. I do. So they made some sort of a, I, I can't remember exactly what the arrangement is, but there's a there's a there's a plan that accommodates two different roundabout ideas that that, that i can't give you more than that because i don't know the exact details but where they they know they have to give up some dirt because of what we did for them right exactly okay. yeah no I'm, right. I'm familiar with that situation so good so um yeah, I, I that's as far as the transportation planner, that's the same information that I have, but there's no one on deck yet. Uh, Rick and then Ed. Yeah, Rick. just just a general. I, I'm I'm, str I'm, str I'm Am I muted? No. Um, I'm struggling a little bit with this whole discussion because it, you know, the public's right away to pass and repass over a roundabout isn't any different than a, an intersection. And um, so we're not commenting on issues that are primary to our mission. And so it would seem to me the town would look more specifically to the traffic safety committee uh, for people who think they're better than the other. Um, so I, I just want us all to think about that. I'm not sure what the answer is, Alan, but... Right. Um, we're getting into areas which aren't directly in our mission, is my sense. Okay, I, I, I uh, your point is well taken, and um, I disagree somewhat because I think uh, you, you, you're absolutely correct that it is traffic safety. That's what's motivating um, putting these structures in place, the rotaries or the roundabouts or whatever. Uh, it is a traffic safety issue. Um, I do think that it's part of our public access, um, you know, thing. So we can chime in. But I, I agree with you. I think that traffic safety should be the leader on this. Um, <laughs> um, and there are other, you know, other. Um, you know, DPW certainly has a say in this and, and so on. But until we get a traffic planner, somebody who's going to be in charge of this these projects, um, you know, I, I, I think there is no need for us to make a recommendation at this point. And that the appropriate time to make a recommendation would be when there is someone in place uh, to direct the town's thinking about this and where we can have, a, we can share our input uh, regarding public access for that. Ed, did you have a comment? Um, I didn't have my hand up previously, actually. It did look like it. But uh, after uh, Rick and your, 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 your comments, uh, I agree. I, I think our input is mainly the access up to these safe passage points, traffic safety points around or over or through these roundabouts. I think that's where we come in on, you know, the sidewalks need to be in a certain spot. The uh, a turnoff lane might have to do some accommodation or, you know, things like that. I think that's kind of um, the hand in glove kind of part of our mission. I mean, it, it does come down to traffic safety, but it comes down to the access to get to the traffic safety, which in some points there's there's no sidewalk or there's no path to get to the crosswalk really. You know, so I think that's where we kind of come in on this. Right? Yeah, I, I agree yeah. with you. I, I think that um, in terms of many of the things that we do, the sidewalk program project that we did was related to safety, the safety of pedestrians and so on. So um, 
I think the more informed voices that the town hears from with regard to these projects, particularly where they involve public access and so on, um, you know, the more input they get, uh, generally speaking, the better. So, okay, anything else on uh, roundabouts and rotaries? I think we there's a consensus here that we should wait until there is a project manager or someone in charge uh, to carry out those projects, uh, someone to whom we can make our, uh, you know, to whom we can pre present our whatever input we want to make with us. That sound right? Cool. Uh, Ed? That sounds perfect. I, I wanted to also add that uh, in some cases, the roundabouts and rotary should also be the non-rotary, such as Kate and Circle and things like that. I mean, that are not a rotary, but there's some access issues, as uh, Nat might well know, on New Lane and things like that for the wall. That and there's a and that that is a whole other topic to talk about, Ed. Be careful <laughs> on that one. Yeah. yeah. But I tell you what. <laughs> I'll give you a story about that. My father <laughs> tried to move it back three feet in the '60s and got completely blown up. <laughs> but that and that was the truck route. Think about yeah. semis going up New Lane, okay? <laughs> so I asked, and this is something for Nathan or somebody, but supposedly there's a little layout in front of the old Buckley House that those curbs could be pushed back. Just you know, all you need there is about two feet, Ed. That's uh, it. They just need a little tiny bit. It's all about like South Beach, like South Beach Street, twenty-two mm -hmm. inches. You think it was twenty-two feet? It's so much better now. Just that little tiny bit. No. But anyway, I, you're wait. bringing up the old stuff now, Ed. Be careful what you say. <laughs> you're not supposed to fix anything, you know. Exactly. Leave, well, that, it that, that, leave it so it doesn't work. Then we keep complaining for the next ten years. See. Great. <laughs> Well, that'd be the next thing we can take on truck routes. For uh, <laughs> that was the old truck route. So. I know. Right. Okay. Um, old, new, other business or member comments? Any member comments? Uh, old business? Yes, Lee. Back to uh, Phil Smith's concern about uh, assignments on the projects list. Mm hmm. May I look at Rick Atherton and say, Rick, with your interest in Chapter 91, would you join me in uh, place of Leslie? I, I'd be honored to do that. I think we've got a resolution. So I started by seeing Jim the other day. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll, I'll uh, uh, <laughs> correct the projects list, or I'll update it, put it that way. Um, before our next meeting. Okay, any other business to come before the committee this afternoon? Seeing none, uh, I declare we are at the end of our agenda and the meeting is adjourned. So see you next month, November 16th, same time, same place. <laughs> uh, although maybe the town's gonna change and we can go back to uh, two paragraphs so but i'll let you know okay well thank you all have a nice evening and um thank you for sharing your ideas so thank okay. you thank you all very much okay um i'm gonna wait a minute but right now i'm gonna stop recording because the meeting is over <laughs> <laughs>